no, thank you guys. So, um, this course is, is designed to help you be better, just like the level one and level two. But a lot of the times we'll, we'll see courses, and I don't think that's true for level one, level two, and this course. There's courses that you go to and you're really fired up and you get inspired and you feel like you've got work to do. But then after it's closed, you go back to your area, your home, wherever, and you're like, that was great and it made me feel awesome, but I have no idea actually how to do this. And I realized, and this was actually through your, your plan, uh, Lauren, which was really eye-opening to me uh, without even talking to Lauren, is it's easy for me to say, write a plan and pick a focus. Right? And you're like, okay, okay. What does, and if I say that to you, what does that mean? Write a lesson plan and pick a focus. Don't give me the answer you think I want, but if I just said that to you now based on the work we've done, what would you say? Set an intention. So like, you know, there's all kinds of different like areas of intention that you can like specifically <laughs> focus on. And when you say, okay, I'm setting this plan with intention of focusing on effort levels, you know, um, and how body language you know, can tell you where that effort level is. So, you know, yeah, there's all this other stuff there, but you know, this week I just want to get really good at understanding the body language. Yeah, I love it, Eric. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, set an intention. That's perfect. Whatever that is, effort, presence, body language. What if we were going to talk about a movement? I would say, if you told me to start a lesson plan and pick a focus, I'd be like, well, today I'm just going to focus on snatch. Great. Go deeper, though. Now what? Now you're at the you're at your piece of paper, your whiteboard, whatever you well, your computer. What? I'll say oh. I'll a lot this amount of time for snatch because it's more difficult, and we'll do this, and then we'll just quickly go over here. Great. So I'm just gonna. So when you're uh, when you're picking, uh, we're gonna call it picking a focus. You're thinking, I'm gonna look at how much time do I have? That's a consideration. What what else? Today was just my focus was hip explosion. Hip explosion, like hips literally explode. Yeah. <laughs> Modern <laughs> joints everywhere. <laughs> and that that's great. That's like this. That's a theme, right? The themes that we have, and I'll abbreviate them over here because they're really long to write out. Common movement themes in the level two, we have eight of them, and I did talk about them on Monday, like super briefly. But we have midline stabilization. Matt, you guys tell me. If you remember, that, I mean, this is not a call to extremity. Call to extremity. So that's when we, everything comes from the core, and we use the medium movers to go to the little movers that are not very powerful, but very fast. Call to extremity. Midline stabilization is your ability to create this unyielding integrated trunk. This is your S-shaped curvature of the spine, this is your pelvis, and we're looking to make almost like a concrete block that doesn't move, static position. Even if we're doing something like a squat, a deadlift, that position doesn't move. Right, midline stabilization. What else? Balance of the frontal plane. Very good, Jacqueline. That was a good one. <laughs> Balance about frontal plane. Frontal plane is this theoretical line that divides the body into equal halves, 50% forward, 50% back, and it can tell you where you're balanced, right? It's your GPS, keep things close to that plane. What else? You're not allowed to answer the next one because you've got your book. Tell me. <laughs> Posterior change engagement. Posterior change engagement. <laughs> yeah, and I'll write this out fully after this. I don't want to waste time doing that now. You tell me what part of the body is posterior chain engagement involved in? Backside, the good stuff, the go muscles. So we've got your erectors, we've got your glutes, we've got your hamstrings, we've got your calf muscles. And generally, when we talk about posterior chain engagement, it's a foot. We say heels down, weight in the heels, but we're not wanting this, right? We want a balance about your foot. So you're looking at your ball of the foot, somewhere in the middle of the foot, and the frontal plane intersects that foot, roughly. Frontal plane. What else? You can go, Jack, with your. It's okay, well, I'll give them enough. Yeah. What's, what else? What else, did, what else am I a stickler about? 
Sound hip function? Ooh, that was a good one. Sound hip function, and that's what Lauren just said. I'm going to work on hip explosion. So sound hip function is you've got your joint here, right? You've got your femur and you've got your torso. And right now I'm at like an extended hip. It's fully open, 180 degrees. Now when I flex, I uh, close the angle. It's now the, it's this gap between the femur and the, the torso is a little closer. And I'm loading up the good stuff. Flexion, extension, flexion, extension. And depending on the movement we're doing, we're gonna see that happen multiple times in any given one rep. Okay, so in the clean today, what do we have? Flexion, extension, and then <laughs> flexion and extension. And that's why it's, I think it's a great uh, piece that Lauren decided to pick. It's a big hitter, it's where we get the power, it's gonna help everything lighter. It's hard to do well, right? You're like, open your hip, I am coach. I'm doing it, but it's hard. So I love that that would be a focus, that's the theme. Uh, what else? We've got three more. What was I talking about on the wall balls on Monday? What would I not let go? Kara, what did you say to me right after I was done with that workout and you were talking about Dan and blowing you up? Do you remember? You're like, you gotta get down lower in that squat. Full range of motion. Yeah, and, and, he, uh, and I was like, I did, and, and I was like, you're right, full range of motion. Remember you saying that to me? Yeah. And I came over it, and, and I went over to Dan, and I was, I was gonna be like, Dan, get a little lower, but he, uh, he did, and then I'm like, maybe his feet are too wide. I'm like, I'll wait for him yeah. to drop it, and then I'm gonna wait, and I'm gonna time to bring his feet in, but guess what? He didn't drop it. <laughs> for all the reps, he just kept going, and then he, that's when the grunting came out. <laughs> I'm like, well, he's working hard on the leg. But it was great because Carol like pinged me on it. She's like, and why do you think I was struggling to see Dan's death? Because I was, he was there, and I was right here, and I'm like, good. But when you're right back there, everything becomes bigger. Full range of motion about a joint, whether it's whether it's full range in the squat, whether it's full range about your shoulder, whether it's full range in any given movement that we have range of motion. We've got another one in here. Uh, let's go with active shoulders. Active shoulder as well. Show me. Show me an active shoulder in your chair. Yeah, I like that. I'm just pulling your shoulders back. What else? Show me the obvious one. Okay. Uh, everyone usually puts their hands like active shoulder. And all you're doing is trying to counteract the weight that's coming down on you. You're opposing that force. So that could be push up, that could be ring dip, that could be overhead squat, that could even be like the Tony just did, deadlift. So we don't want it to yield to the load. So we've got some active shoulders. And the last one is your effective stance and grip. So a lot of people. What was the G word? Grip. Grip. Yeah, grip. G word. A lot of people will listen to somebody coach and the coach will say, your feet must be under your hips. And they'll put their feet under their hips. Right, uh, and it might look like this. Or it might even look like this. And then the coach will be like, no, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. And they want it, they want it literally right underneath the hips. And that's very black and white, that's very absolute. The hip and the shoulder is gonna be dependent on if we're getting everything else that we need in that movement. So if I'm doing a squat, and I ask uh, the call to put uh, heels under her shoulders and toes slightly out, which is the starting point, is the baseline. And then she squats and this happens. And I'm gonna say, maybe go a little bit wider. Right? She goes a little bit wider and she can get a little bit lower. I gotta find the sweet spot that's been called, but it's gonna be somewhere in that range of close to the hip or close to the shoulder. And that's what I like about Dan's squat in a lot of ways too. He's trying to figure out that spot that's going to help him get the depth. But he's not going too wide, the depth is hard. But if he goes too narrow, what happens then? Toey and no range, right? So it's hard to find that journey now as a coach. We will tell somebody, put your feet under your hips. Put your heels under your hips. And if we don't go and check that, what we're doing is assuming that they know where their hips are or where their feet should go. And generally you think, well, yeah, your hips are here, your feet are here, well, you know, duh, it's that. But they're not, they're like, okay, got it. You know, 
I'm like, well, you got some Beyonce hips over there. Let's let's pull those suckers in. <laughs> the, and the guys, the, the guy stands, the man stands. This is my hip width. And I'm like, no, I need some Ariana Grande hips to like come on in. <laughs> I use Beyonce and Ariana Grande all the time. Like, so we have to guide them through that. So the stance is going to be related to what other points of performance that you need for the movement to be done well. And it's the same with the grip. Generally, we start outside the shoulders, right? But what if I go overhead today in that overhead lunge and I'm here? What would you guys cue me on? What would you say? Pull the bar back, but I heard something in the back there. What did you say? Wider. Kara said wider. Because if I do pull it back, maybe that is the right cue. Maybe I just wasn't aware. But more often than not here, I'll do this. And I'll try to access that back. And then, uh, who was I doing with this today? Was it you, Lindy? No. Oh, it was Emily and um, Danny this morning in the, in the other gym. And I'm like, okay, pull my ribs down. And she's like, pull the ribs down. And she's like, pull the bar back. And I was just doing this little dance back and forth and Kara said make your grip wider so maybe what I need is wider and I can pull so that grip might not look exactly like you see in the level one level two guide but it's the effective grip for that athlete in that moment so effective stance and grip we always have a baseline and I probably did this to you at some point in the last couple of days I told you bring your feet in and you in your mind you're like it's not where I like my feet that's not where I'm going to go but I don't know you as an athlete, and then I work with you as, as we go through. You've got to have a starting point. So when you said here, explosive hip extension, Lauren, I love that. But now, if I'm, if I'm saying to you, okay, well, we know how much time we want to spend on it. We know that the, the macro focus is going to be hip extension. What should the next logical step be in order for us to make it come alive on the, on the dance floor? What do you specific think? warm-up or the progressions? Progressions, right? Steps, logical steps. So we'll call it a progression. <clears throat> it could also be a step. And there are so many different combinations of progressions that you can use. But you have to remember that your focus today is explosive hits. So we've, we've got a hand power clean, and if some of you are not familiar with the hand power clean, it looks like this. Then you stand. And you're like, yeah, we know. Still demo it. Just so they see it, because now they have an, an overall picture of the roadmap for where we're going. So now I want to show you, you guys are tracking. But now when we're actually doing the progression and we're making the steps, this is where this is what I want you to leave with. A system that you can plug and play for any movement. And it starts with the name of the movement, which we'll abbreviate there, whatever it is, squat, snatch, clean, jerk, you're in the middle. There's always going to be three phases of a movement. What's the first phase? What's the first thing that always happens in a movement? Setup, and it's static. Yes, love it. So we've got setup, and I'll put in static and it like that. What happens next? How you do the movement, and we'll, we'll call it the execution. Okay. And Jacqueline, what is that? Dynamic. Beautiful. And then what's the last piece? <coughs> and don't worry about the actual word, but like what happens at the end? They come back to finish. Finish and then reset. Yeah, that's it. So we'll call it the finish. This could also be a, a receiving position. And today's a good example of that, right? We have the, the we have the catch, but we need to check that static, um, and then we have the stand, which is also like the actual finish position of the hand clean. And um, what is this? Static or dynamic? Static. So any movement that we have has these phases. There's always going to be a setup. There's always going to be some kind of movement. There's always going to be an end position. Now we need to look at what is involved in the setup. And the, there are three main ingredients to the setup. And I actually talked about some of them in these themes. So what's the first, what's the first thing you want to look at? Not the first thing meaning is the most important, but give me one thing you want to look at in the setup. 
Where do your feet start? Yeah. Feet, love it. And this, this is um, something actually that I stole from Mike Bergner, Coach Bergner, the uh, Olympic weightlifting in-house like legend, CrossFit, Coach B. He would always say stance. What else do we need to look at? It's that G word, grip. grip. And then does anyone know the third one? Eyes. Position, it could be, eyes could be involved in position, but yeah, position. So if you've ever worked with Coach B or you've ever just watched one of his videos, which Tyler will definitely be sending you links after this. <laughs> Mike B's always like, stand grip position, here we go. And everyone's like, and they know, they're, like, it's like they're just conditioned. Stand grip position. Is there a stand grip position in a pull up? Yeah. yeah, the obvious ones are what? Grip and but but in the which are the obvious ones in the pull up here? Grip, grip and position. The stance doesn't seem so obvious because your feet are not on the ground. But you can also think of stance like what Lauren said is feet. So you would tell people what in the pull up? Bring your feet together. So there's there is some kind of direction there for your feet, right? Stance grip position. Beautiful. We'll leave that there for now. Now in the execution, let's uh, keep it big level, high level here. Give me some words that explain the directions you can go in in an execution. Ground yeah. to shoulders or ground to overhead? Ground to, so an up, right? We've got an up, ground to shoulders, ground to overhead. Down. And we've got a down. We've got an ascent, we've got a descent, we've got a drive, we've got a recovery. We, any word you want to use, we're going to have some kind of change of direction at some point. So for ease of simplicity, we'll just say we have an up or an ascent and we have a down. That's usually what happens in the execution. Okay. Make sense? And then to finish, to finish, to finish, what are we looking at in here? Where does it end? And we can honestly just peel back to a stance grip position again. And I've actually never thought about what goes on here until this moment right now. I'm like, oh, what is that? What are the things we look for in a setting? But it's probably the same because it's static. So you can look again at stance, grip. I'd say I've learned more this in these last couple of days than I've learned in a long time. Just being here with you guys. Come to Ohio, we'll show you things. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Go Bengals. <laughs> Now we're getting somewhere. Now, I'm, now, I'm, now I actually have a reason to call the bedroom. I'm super cool. I have a team I can attach to. Yeah, the Sanskrit position. So in the hand thing today, we've got that receiving position. Look at the feet. What do we normally see? We see maybe the knee is in, or we go too wide, or maybe we land with for your position, muted hip. The grip, maybe the grip is uh, too wide, and, and so on and so forth. So this is your high level approach to any movement when you're picking an intention. But I'm gonna throw another layer onto it. And maybe this is right now enough. But we can't just end on, well, I know I need to understand the grip and the position. Within each one of these steps, there's focuses. So in the stance, the focus is what? I wanna see where the weight is in the heels. There's a, I wanna see um, what kind of grip they have. There's points of performance, actually, I'm going to write that, points of performance in all of these. So, points of performance in the stance for the hand clean. Feet under the hips, weight in the heels, toes straight ahead up slightly turned down. They're points of performance that you can see. Grip, position, same thing. But let's get back to Lauren's piece, because Lauren said she works on hip extension today. Which would mean, where would that land here? Where would that? That'd be the dynamic. It'd be the execution, right? And specifically, which one of these, maybe? The up, right? Because we're exploding up. So, we're in a good spot here. We've highlighted that we want the theme to be hip extension. It's great. This is where we're going to spend the time. 
So now what do we have to do here? Plan a progression. P plan a progression, what do you say? Break it. Say, break it down. Let's do that together. Some of you guys that have already done it, maybe you could share what you did today and then uh, we could talk about if it was the right thing. So we've, let's say we've, we've taught the setup, everyone's good to go, and now we're going into the first phase of this hand clean with the goal in mind that hip extension is going to be the key. Hit me. How I did it today was starting with your feet, hip width apart, pointed forward, and then we just did the dip first. So spinning up the hip and the knees, driving out on the knees, creating tension. And then from there, just driving through the heels to stand. So we did that for like five progressions. And then from there- Let me pause you there, because I like that. So remember the hip extension is the thing that you want. You've got to keep that in mind, it's great. So Lauren did this, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yep, yeah, great. So right now, remember the focus, hip extension. So yes, we do want to teach what Lauren said, right? The knees out. But what would be a great way for them to connect their hip extension straight away when they come out of that bit? Squeeze your butt. Squeeze your butt. And would you say, okay guys, ready, go. Ready, go. Ready. What would you say? Go. That. You want it fast. You are ready guys? Dip. Go. And because you're saying it loud, they understand that it's explosive hips. And I like that progression because it's just so simple. There's literally nothing else for them to think about than squeeze your butt, stand up. Before we go back down to the next, the next step, let's just talk about overlaying that, seeing um, and correcting. If this is my uh, people, and um, Mindy did this so much better today on the second and um, after we a little work here. I'm going to be teaching here. This is my platform. This is your stage. So you've got your tools up there, your PVC pipe or your father, whatever it is. And I, I was calling you Moses today, Mindy, because she would demo him and she'd be like, let my people go. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, good job. <laughs> Good job! And I was like, man, don't piss Mindy off. She's going to launch that sticky. Moses! Yeah, I'll get off the gray, wherever you want to go. You're like, but it, this is something that we've, we've all done. We all do. We all like hang on to that thing. But um, once you've, you've done your teaching, Mindy, you tell me where, where, where was the best place for you to see today? On the side. On the side, right? So she, she taught and she would just kind of go up and down. And maybe she would beeline across to get to the other side. Open down, call enough reps, get back in. Now, if I'm standing here, who should I want to be looking at for hip extension? And I'll just, you can tell me where you want me to start. Start. The front row, maybe? What about this person? Why not? Too close. Too close. Yeah, too close. The, the grunter effect. I'm like, I don't see what's going on. The down effect. So maybe what I do is I stand here and I look at this person and I look at this person and I'm not able to shoot across to this person. Now because I am, I'm looking here and here and these people are like, what about me coach? Where is a good time to get them involved? Done. Static. Setups and, and finish positions of these people, just a couple. Just a general overview of, of getting out the circle, being around the group, verbal, visual kind of thing. It's okay to go in there if you need to, but you don't want to get caught in like, like that, like doing this thing. Okay. Haven't you set up and like call five reps and you look at three people on each rep or like have something like so that again, so calling that multiple reps and you might only look at one or two people and then you step back and you look at another two people. While they're just going on their own? No, as you call them. So like say, all right, set up, dip, stand. So you have like two people and then you take a step and then you look at another two people for the next rep. Yeah. Pull, and yeah. you just go around the whole room doing yeah. it back. So maybe it might be 10 reps, but you look at everybody in the room at those 10 reps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just keep, it's just rinse and repeat. Yeah. Like ready, go. You're looking at this person, reset. 
give them a cue if you need to. If you need to check back, maybe look at them again. If you're not ready, go. Move over here, then look at these. It, it's this constant rep, look, move. Rep, look, move. Yeah, beautiful. Good? So that was that. All right, Lauren, hit me. What's, what was the next thing that you did? Dip, jump, catch, exaggerating the up to get that full extension. You did the whole thing. Uh, not, we didn't use the arms. We had no barbell in hand. It was just, you were set up. Yep. Then it's just dip, then explode up, and then catch. Yep. Okay. And then I didn't even care if they moved their arms or not. I was just worried about getting that extension and then that catch. Great. Right. Next. Okay. And is that, <coughs> would that be effective? What if, I agree, I think, if, the, if, the, if I'm here and I jump up and my focus is hips, and they move, or they don't. Is that what you were saying? They just mm -hmm. kind of did a jump yeah. and land. Okay, love it. And there's huge red flags with people just doing that because they didn't get, they, their knees never, yeah, they never straighten. You told me to jump, coach. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't need to jump and straighten your legs. So we do the same thing, two things. Love it. What was next? Um, from there, we worked on fast elbows or the pull underneath the bar, and that was our finished position. So now you went, you went right to the hang power mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Focus on hip extension. Simple, right? We're just pausing them and having them stand. Focus on hip extension. But now we're not pausing. Uh, did you pause them? I would just, I just said dip and hold. And okay. And then I would say go. And, and then, then they would explode up. Yeah. Land. Okay, good. So now they're not actually doing the dip yet. They're just dipping and holding. The focus is still on the hips, but now it's two hip actions, it's two sound functions. It's extension on the way up and what on the way down. Flexion, extend. So she's checking all this box too in there as well. And then with the full movement, was the focus still on the hips at this point? It was, but then I layered on top of it the fast elbows or the pull underneath. So she's like, all right guys, don't forget about hip extension. But now we're going to add in just one more piece. Fast elbows. I, don't, I wasn't in the class, but I imagine if, if, if Lauren said fast arms, fast elbows, and it wasn't like, okay, don't forget when you get to the top of the jump, you're going to shrug, you're going to keep the bar close, you're going to loosen your hands around the bar so that your elbows can come through and land it on the shoulders with your hands outside the shoulders and do a little curtsy. Like she probably, hopefully you didn't do that, right? You were just like, Fast elbows. Correct. Right. Yeah. Because it's too much information, even though it's right. So this was this would be an effective progression if Lauren was able to get people's majority of the people in the room's hips open. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Focus, focus, focus added now with that little fast elbows. Right. So that's one way we could do it. Mindy, what did you do? We started with the dip stand. Dip stand. Um, can you, would you mind just standing there and showing us about it? Just, just say. Uh, we actually called it a bow. A bow. Oh, okay. Uh, right. And bow. And the hang. So I told him the first thing we're going to do is bow forward slightly, looking for just shoulders in front of the bar. So that's the only thing we look at static. Shoulders, um, over, up. Okay. So that was this, right? Is that? Yes. Okay. Then it was that, stand, shrug. Stand, shrug. Can you show, show me that? What was it called? When I said set, they got here. When I said go, stand, shrug. Stand, shrug. And the focus was what on that? Standing up first and then the shoulders moving. Almost like it's the name of the progression. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a stand and a shrug. So that was the focus. Now, if this is my person that I'm watching, we've got, like with, Laura, with Lauren's focus, we only needed to probably be in this region, right? That little hip area where the femur and the torso are connected. But now we've added on something that we're looking for, where two things are moving one after the other. Now we have to move our little uh, viewing panel up a little bit to kind of highlight the elbows moving or, or the shoulders moving. 
up here, so you've got that window, right? And what was, it was set and go, right? Set right. up. Yeah. And it was hips, two shoulders. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next one. And then it was set to get here again. And then once they stood, instead of just the shrug, I went high elbows. And okay. um, what was the focus on that one? And after they were fully extended, and that shrug sure happened, the elbows were turned back. Okay, to keep the bar close and so the bar close. So you're looking at elbows, and you're looking at the, the, the distance between the, the bar and the body. So we'll call it keeping the bar close to the frontal plane. Bar close. Uh, and then what? And then we did muscle clean. Muscle clean. And what was the focus on that? So on that, it was we're bringing those elbows up, but I wanted them to whip fast. So it went. Stand and whip. Did you say stand and did you say, did you have a word? Did you say stand and whip or did you say something? <coughs> I probably said quick elbows. Quick elbows. You did. He quick did. elbows? Yeah, fast he elbows. Did. Great. And then what was the last And then we did the hand power clean. Then the, the full bonanza. And when you went to the hand power clean, did you have a, a something for them to focus on or we did you just we focus on the catch? The landing? Yeah. Okay. So they had to do, I said go, they gave me the full movement, and then they had to hold their catch position before they were on And what were you looking for in that? Just back, elbows forward. Okay, great. So what's different about, uh, n neither one is better or the other, these are just two very different ways of looking at things. What was different about Lauren's focus and Mindy's focus? So, well, Lauren was more focused on the hip extension, and Mindy's was more like the static, I think, position, the starting and the catching, and the, like, she had to hold the ending position, finish position, to make sure that everything went good before we were able to finish. So in your explanation of the difference between Lauren and, uh, and Mindy's, how long did it take you to explain Lauren's focus? Like two seconds. How long did it take you to explain Mindy's? Like 10 seconds. Why? Just because she focused on a little bit. More. More. Right, and, that, and that's okay. So I love both of them. And I've done ones where I'm with Laura and I'm like, today, you're just gonna finish your lifts. And if you know a little bit about Olympic lifting, the three poles, we call this, right, the finish. You probably heard Olympic lifting coaches be like, finish, finish, finish. And that just means your shoulders need to be behind your hips, before you bend your arms, that's the entire focus for today. Because what we get in, hip extension. And then there's been other days where I've gone into more of the weeds and I've had micro focuses on each progression. I've looked at one point of performance for each progression. Neither one is right or wrong. And I encourage you guys to do both. But pick something that's gonna allow you to, to do this process. And then if that's, if it's easier to do this, <coughs> do that. I mean, you just did that one time and you remembered that, like, it was, it makes sense. Um, but if you're up there and you cannot remember each step and what you're looking for and how you're going to call the rep and, you know, you're going to go static dynamic, that might be a little too much for right now. You just pick one. Well, I will say, I taught at one point at 5 a.m. and I saw a whole bunch of people muscle it and push their hips forward on the catch, oh, which is why in the following classes I was more worried about get your butt back yeah. and drilling that so that less of that happens. And that actually leads me nicely to the, the next point is when we say this, pick a focus, how do you get to arrive at that? Where is that even the first starting point? And Lauren, why did you focus on hip extension today? Because nine times out of 10 people don't fully get extended so they don't have the power to move from the legs. Yeah. So like most of our people miss that position. So that's why that was the focus. It's a common fault and it's so true. I, I really have a hard time getting my hips up on the clean because of how high the bar is up on your body and you gotta get that little double knee bend in there, right? And then you jump on a snatch. Isn't it easier to get your hips up and on a snatch? You can get the bar higher up in your hips. So Great rationale for why hip extension, outside of it obviously being a main theme for it, there's a reason. 90% of the people I train, I feel like they really struggle. Let's dive into that.
And then for this, this could just this is just your general overview. That could have been today we're going to focus on keeping the arms long. It could have been focused on keeping your heels down longer. You pick something based upon what you gener have been genu generally seeing in your classes. So we call that a common fold across your group. Notice how Lauren and Mindy both didn't say, today I really think we should work on triple extension and we're gonna do some tall cleans. We're gonna get them on a barbell and a bit up on their tippy toes and I'm just gonna say, go! And they're gonna drop down, which is a really great drill. It really is a great drill. But maybe that pulling under is not the issue. Maybe that going up is the issue. But if that was something where we wanted to do a little drill to be speed, speed under the bottom, now my focus is here on the down. Does that help? Mm -hmm. So if I was to say now, all right guys, what do you know about picking a focus and, and understanding time and having a progression and knowing big picture to micro picture and then having some kind of ability to, to check in static and dynamic. Do you guys have an actual objective system that you can use? Um, oh, that's not good. I didn't see any knots. If I was, could you, do, could you go through this roadmap yourselves? That, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Sorry, maybe I just got a little wordy with objective and system and roadmap. But really what I'm saying is, you got your movement, you know, think about what the focus should be, you know, look at those three, three um, sections, set up, execution, finish position. You're gonna decide what, which one of those you wanna dive into. And then you're gonna write a little plan on how you're gonna get there. Could you guys all do that now? Okay, that was a lot better. I got 80% not. <coughs> and I'm not saying it'll be done well. I'm not saying you guys are just going to be like, because it's a new skill. But there's one thing that I really, it's really important that you know from me, is that you guys are all really good coaches. And I don't take that, I don't say that, to, I don't just say that to people. And what I mean by good is it's based on those six criteria. Teach, see, correct boom management, presence attitude, demonstration. And I knew, and today that really hit me hard um, in the class that I saw with Mindy because, and it, it actually it happened with Lauren on Monday and it happened with Jason yesterday and it happened with you today, Mindy, because I'd seen multiple classes of yours, right? I've not seen everybody. Uh, I think I've seen Kara one time, right? But I've not seen you do a second class yet, but I've seen you guys do multiple classes. So you went out and you did the thing, and it was okay, right? It was people had fun, they left, it was all good. And then we had a little chit chat about things, and I didn't, I didn't like tell you what to do. I just kind of op exposed you to some more options. In the beginning, I offered some things, and you, some of you chose to keep it, some of you changed it a little bit. But then you went out and you tried something different, and you, it was like night and day coaching. But within 30 minutes, right, Lauren, between your classes, is it was a quick like, hey, what about this? Try this, it? Jason, we had like five minutes in between, or 30 minutes, same thing. Same thing we do. It was very quick in between. You guys transformed who you were. And it's exactly the same as when you show somebody technique on a muscle up. They've got all the pulling strength, all the pushing strength. They can't get a muscle up. Spend some time on the low rings dial in the efficiency of it, tweak it a little bit, and then they hop up and because they had the organic potential, they now can do five muscle ups. But in like 30 minutes of lowering work, they didn't get stronger. They didn't get more flexible. They didn't organically change anything about their physiology. They just had a brain and a body connection that made them accomplish the task. And that's what you guys have been doing with everybody I've worked with. I'm like, hey, why don't you try this? And you tried it, and it worked better. It worked better because I could see change in the athlete. Same thing. So I encourage you as we, as we move forward, is like take all that knowledge that you have, that you've learned yourself, that Tyler's given you, learned from each other, and now ask the question and assess yourself, is my knowledge actually helpful for the people that are in front of me? Or am I just spurting out things because I know? Always a good metric. I'm like, man, I really talked a lot in that class, but I actually feel like I only really looked at three people to see if they got better. I've got to do better next time. Okay. 
questions on anything? I'll give you 30 seconds or so to digest. Okay. On sure. this, anything at all we've got, I'm gonna put you guys through in, in a minute just a clean progression, super simple. Um, and I'll use, I guess I'll use this one on the board, but we could also go through Lauren's or Lauren could take us through it, like we could do two iterations of it. And then I do want to quickly touch on that overhead lunch today because it's something that's, I think, newer to you guys. Is it newer? Not you as athletes, but your members. Yes. Yeah, okay, so there is there's a whole system for that lunch too. It's, and it's, there's some piece of mind. Anything you got? So I want to focus, like, you have time there, and then hip extension, that would just be movement. So that's a specific focus of a movement, right? So like other examples of focuses that you could do, you got time, movement, progressions, and then like would pacing, breathing, technique, would all these be different focuses? And like really is there a more question. exhaustive list for that? Yeah. This is this is for your lesson plan, your map equation. I call it a map equation, because you're basically just yeah. adding and subtracting minutes from things that might not need as much attention. Mm -hmm. So that's just your you weren't here on uh, Monday, Greg, I'll walk you through it if you want. We just went through the time step. Your hip extension is is the, the theme. What is the theme today? And and if you're struggling with focuses, you can pick something from one of one of these that will help you okay. too. Yeah. Right. And then your your progression is gonna be your how-to. Now I love that you talked about breathing and breaking things up and strategy. Yeah. Think about think about your um, your athletes in terms, I won't write it, but in terms of safety and performance, mm -hmm. safety and performance both need mechanical uh, attention. Yeah. Efficiency is, it's, it's strategy and it's something that you'll sprinkle in at different parts of the, mm -hmm. the lesson plan. So I, I don't know how you do it here, but typically we'll give them a little powwow during the skill session um, at the end, we'll say, look, as you're loading up, think about something you can break up for however many sets. Um, so something there for breaking up strategy. Uh, we'll do that for all the skills. But then before the work, before the bathroom break, we, we have a bring it in moment, and we'll be like, all right, so we've done a lot of mechanical work. Uh, we've got through progressions. But now let's just talk a little bit about how you can make this a little easier. So, We'll use this, we'll use today. Total bar is a great example. Um, I'm not going to go all the way up on this, so maybe I'll try. But I did 60 GHDs yesterday, guys, so my lower abs hate me. That's 6 0 off the lot. But ideally, we do this kick off, right? And we do this aggressive and active kick down, like your heels are hitting a little trampoline and they're popping back up. That's how you cycle total bar. But at some point, the total bar fairy comes along and steals your toe to bars. It's highly offensive when it happens. So what do you do? Well, you're gonna be doing your singles, and it is, and we all, we all go to single city sometimes. You jump up, you kick, you fall, and you're always gonna fall forward. You take a step back, you jump again. So it would be up, 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 that's an efficiency tip for when things go south. Or on a wall ball, I like the three breath rule. Throw your ball, you're exhausted. And I like the don't, don't, don't uh, no station left behind rule. I don't know a lot of those rules. Like, if you stay at your station and you look at your equipment that's not moving because you're not moving it, you're gonna feel a little guilty at some point and you're gonna pick it up quicker than you would if you did the Jason Kalima. <laughs> You know, do you know that story? 2010, CrossFit Games. What happened, Lauren, do you remember? No, I just thought the CrossFit Circle. The CrossFit Circle. Mm. They were doing a manga. First time ever we did a manga. Three, two, one, go, boom, hop on the rings, the planes, <laughs> go back. It was the most electric CrossFit thing I've ever seen. Everyone jumps to the rings and they're all looking okay. Remember 2010, most looks were, and everyone's told about it. And then it was a, a 95 pound snatch, 135 snatch, and Khalifa. I am not lying when I tell you that this was the rig in the middle, and it was in the tennis stadium, and then there was a whole bunch of space in the back. Jason started here, and, and no embellishment, he 
finished like over in the opposite corner of the tennis stadium because he was just doing the and they call it the Jason Kleeper shuffle because he like steps back and then he goes back up. Anyway, long story but it was a little bit of history for you. Stand, look at your thing. One, two, three, and go. And those breaths can be long, they can be short. It's three breaths, nice labored breaths, and it's go time, efficiency. They're not as important as the mechanics, even though they're super helpful. So that would be more of a nuanced thing. Give them a little love. Good question. Yep. Tyler, you ready? Tyler's like, let's go. Come on, flow master Watson. So well, let's um He likes the sound of that. Yeah. <laughs> he's literally like this, he's like I mean you literally just called me a games athlete. Gotta go. Gotta go. <laughs> Wrap it up. Um so normally if we were gonna do a snatch, I'd get you on a PVC pipe, but you're not gonna grab a PVC pipe for a clean progression because quite frankly it's stupid. Like, unless you've got someone new and you wanna really show them like how, you're just gonna do this. Because that bar is just going to bounce up. So we're not getting pipes, we're going to get a barbell. The barbell you pick any weight you want. 15 pound, 35 pound, it doesn't matter as long as you've got some feedback. And then I'm going to have you guys in that part of the room. And we're going to be in lines. I'm going to leave it up to you to organize your line. I'm going to 